Hey, Pedro. Will you two excuse me? Michael Keaton is an American actor, producer, and director. He is a world-class entertainer, yet a rather private person. He went through many different phases in his career to reach the superstar status he enjoys today. We will tell you about this and more in our video. I admire that. Michael Keaton, how Vulture from Spider-Man lives and how much he earns. Well, I'm not sure. Michael John Douglas, this is the real name of the actor, was born on September 5, 1951 in Kennedy Township, Pennsylvania, and grew up in the neighboring town of Karopolis. Mr. Wayne, something wrong? No, uh, his parents. His father, George Douglas, worked as a civil engineer and surveyor, and his mother, Leona Elizabeth, was a housewife. Michael was the youngest son of seven children. They grew up in a strict Catholic family of Irish and Scottish descent. After graduating from high school, he enrolled at Kent State University in Ohio, where he studied speech for two years, but dropped out and went to Pittsburgh. There, he worked for a while as a model, security guard, and bartender, and later he considered an acting career and tried to become a stand-up comedian, theater performer, and even a cameraman. In the mid-70s, Michael moved to Los Angeles, where he began acting in television series. The first of them was the children's show Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Michael appeared in three episodes and also worked in the project as a full-time assistant. In LA, he began using the pseudonym Michael Keaton for the first time to avoid confusion with actor Michael Douglas. Fans have often wondered whether the new surname is a tribute to actress Diane Keaton or actor Buster Keaton, but Michael always refuted these theories. The real origin story of the pseudonym is very different. In fact, he just found it in the phone book. In 1977, Michael got roles in several TV series, including the sitcom All's Fair, starring in eight episodes. Then, Keaton kept on appearing on TV, and in 1978, he made his feature film debut in the comedy Rabbit Test. He got his next feature film role in 1982. He played one of the main roles in the comedy Night Shift. What happens if we get a call? You know, if you have to go and pick up a body or something? Hey, I'll be back. <laughs> What's the matter? By the time I get there, they won't be dead anymore. <laughs> the aspiring actor's performance did not go unnoticed, and he won the Kansas City Film Critics Circle Award and Best Supporting Actor. Since then, his career has taken off. There have also been changes in Michael's personal life. In 1982, he married actress Caroline McWilliams. Soon they had a son, Sean Maxwell Douglas. Meanwhile, the audience saw the actor in the comedy drama Mr. Mom. Soon, Keaton's filmography was replenished with a movie about gangsters, Johnny Dangerously, where he played the main role. In 1985, Woody Allen invited the actor to play the main character in his film, The Purple Rose of Cairo. Michael agreed to act for a very modest fee for the opportunity to work with the famous director, but after 10 days of filming, he decided that the actor is not fit for the role because he didn't look like a hero lover of the 30s and replaced him with Jeff Daniels. In 1986, Michael appeared in the comedies Gung Ho and Touch and Go, and the following year, he played the main role in the movie The Squeeze, but it turned out to be a box office disaster. In 1988, he appeared in the films She's Having a Baby, without being mentioned in the credits, and starred in Tim Burton's fantasy horror comedy Beetlejuice. Michael's filming period was only two weeks long, and the screen time was just over 17 minutes. But even in this short time, Keaton managed to make the movie striking and unforgettable, for which he was nominated for the Saturn Award as Best Supporting Actor. Am I overstep my bounds? Just tell me. Come on. You know what's really beautiful about this? You two kids picked me. You didn't have to, but you picked me. It makes me want to kiss you guys. Come on, come no. on. Give me According to rumors, he improvised 90% of his lines. Maybe that's why the actor considers this to be his favorite movie of those he has ever starred in. In the same year, he played a real estate salesman addicted to illegal substances in the drama Clean and Sober. They say that after seeing this movie, producer John Peters decided that the role of Bruce Wayne in Tim Burton's Batman movie should be played by Michael Keaton. The creator of the comic book, Bob Kane, also spoke in favor of casting Keaton, but his approval for the main role has caused a wave of backlash from fans. About 50,000 angry letters were sent to the Warner Bros. office. In response, the studio released a teaser of the official trailer to give the outraged public an idea of the actor's potential. Keaton spent about two months preparing, studying kickboxing under the guidance of a professional trainer. As a result, almost all scenes Michael performed without a double, except those involving increased risk to life. 
When the question arose about the actress for the role of Bruce Wayne's lover, Michelle Pfeiffer was considered, but Keaton, who had a relationship with her in the late 80s, made it clear that it would be awkward for him to work with her. As a result, they cast Kim Basinger. The world premiere of the superhero action movie took place in June 1989. The film grossed more than $400 million at the box office, and Keaton received a fee of $5 million. After playing the legendary superhero, he became an idol for millions of teenagers in all corners of the world. A lot of people think you're as dangerous as the Joker. <laughs> He's psychotic. Some people say the same thing about you. That same year, Michael voiced Batman in the video game of the same name and starred in the comedy The Dream Team. In April 1990, the ABC channel aired an Earth Day special. It featured some of the world's stars, including the actor. He also appeared in the thriller Pacific Heights and divorced his wife. What caused their separation is unknown, but judging by Michael's flings in the late 80s, in particular with the adult movie star Rachel Ryan, it's possible that Caroline was tired of putting up with her husband's affairs. Despite the breakup with his wife, Keaton remained very close to his son, and in order to devote as much time as possible to Sean, he refused to star in such projects as Police Academy, The Fly, Speed, the TV series Lost, and others. After the divorce, Michael started a relationship with Courtney Cox. On their first date, they discussed their dream homes, and as a couple, they led a secluded lifestyle. At some point, even planned to get married, but after six years of living together, they broke up. Yet Courtney spoke very fondly of Michael, calling him the most wonderful person she had ever met. Meanwhile, in 1991, the actor played the main role in the film One Good Cop, and in June 1992, the film Batman Returns was released. The sequel could not repeat the success of the previous film, but broke several box office records, collecting almost $267 million worldwide. I suppose you feel better now, sir. <sighs> no. Actually, I feel worse. This time, Michelle Pfeiffer was Keaton's partner, and they were nominated for an MTV award for their on-screen kiss. The actor's fee was $10 million, although some sources say it was $11 million. Famously, the actor was supposed to return for the third Batman movie, but when director Tim Burton was removed from the production, he, in support, refused to star in it, despite the fact that he was offered $15 million, a record fee at that time. Interestingly enough, many years later, the Batman costume in which Keaton starred in The Batman Returns was sold at auction. The amount received turned out to be quite modest, only $41,000. The starting price of the lot was $33,000. Also in 1992, the famous Japanese animator Hayao Miyazaki released the animated film Porco Rosso. In 1993, Keaton starred in the film adaptation of Shakespeare's play Much Ado About Nothing and the drama My Life. He was also considered for the role of Phil Connors in Groundhog Day, but as he later admitted, he turned it down because he didn't understand the script, which he later regretted. Later, the actor played the main role in the comedy drama The Paper and in the romantic comedy Speechless. In 1996, the actor played an unlucky engineer, Doug Kinney, in the sci-fi comedy Multiplicity. At that time, digital technology was in its infancy, and the scenes where Keaton's characters interact had to be shot from many takes and then superimposed on each other. Then Michael appeared in Quentin Tarantino's action movie Jackie Brown, and his next work was the role of the narrator in the melodrama Inventing the Abbots. 1998 was an extremely productive year for the actor. He played the main role in the thriller Desperate Measures, acted as one of the executive producers of the film Body Shots, played Jack Frost in the Christmas family comedy of the same name, and appeared in the action film Out of Sight, but wasn't mentioned in the credits. In 2000, the sports drama A Shot at Glory was released, where Keaton appeared in one of the leading roles. A little later, as a guest star, he voiced the prisoner Jack Crowley in an episode of the animated series The Simpsons. In 2002, the actor joined the cast of the sitcom Frasier, appearing in one of the episodes of the project, and starred in the drama Live from Baghdad. Michael's role in the latter earned him a Golden Globe nomination as Best Actor in Miniseries or Television Film. You want to know what I think? We're a 24-hour news network looking for a 24-hour story, and one just fell from the sky. People aren't going to wait till 7 o'clock at night to find out whether we're at war or not. They're going to tune in to see it. Yeah, I understand you want Baghdad. Yes, I do. The following year, fans saw the celebrity in the crime thriller Quicksand and heard his voice in an episode of the animated series King of the Hill. Then the actor starred in the romantic comedy First Daughter. According to rumors, at that time, he had a fling with actress model Audra Lynn. In 2005, Keaton played the main role in the supernatural horror White Noise, after which he co-starred with Robert Downey Jr. in the comedy drama Game 6. 
For each day of filming in this movie, Michael was paid $100. Another film starring the actor that year was the family sports movie Herbie Fully Loaded, where he appeared with Lindsay Lohan. He didn't leave the racing theme, as the next year Keaton voiced Chick Hicks in the animated movie Cars. He also voiced this character in the video game of the same name. Michael also acted as an executive producer of the comedy film The Last Time, where he played the main role co-starring Brendan Fraser, and together with the comedy rock band Tenacious D, appeared in the short film Time Fixers, which was used as a promotional tool on the iTunes website. The first half of the video was available for free, and the second half could be accessed after pre-ordering the band's album. In 2007, Michael took part in the miniseries The Company, for which he was nominated for the Actors Guild Award as Outstanding Actor in a Miniseries or TV Movie. Then Keaton expressed himself in a new directorial role, making a drama film The Merry Gentleman. In it, he co-starred with Scottish actress Kelly MacDonald. The film premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in 2008 and was released in 2009, receiving positive reviews. You know, I, um, you find presents under a tree, I found a girl under a tree. So. <laughs> You must have been a very good boy. <laughs> the next work in the actor's filmography was a romantic comedy post-grad. He also voiced Chick again for another video game. 2010 also started with voice acting. The American star and his famous colleagues gave their voices to the characters of the animated film Toy Story 3. Keaton got the role of Ken. Then he appeared in the buddy cop comedy The Other Guys and starred in two episodes of the sitcom 30 Rock. In 2012, Keaton again proved himself as a voice actor, this time for the video game Call of Duty Black Ops 2 and the animated film Noah's Ark The New Beginning, voicing the main character Noah. In 2013, Michael appeared on the big screens in the role of a sadistic criminal in Penthouse North. He also acted as an executive producer of the film and later starred in the comedy Clear History. In 2014, the actor appeared in the superhero film Robocop and the action crime film Need for Speed. That same year, the actor got an unusual role. He played forgotten actor Regan Thompson in the movie Birdman. This work has brought him the Screen Actors Guild Award and the Golden Globe, as well as more than 10 nominations for such prestigious film awards as the Oscar and Saturn. I have a lot riding on this play. Oh, is that right? Yeah. People know who I am. They, they don't know you, your work, man. They know the guy from the bird suit who goes... Michael and the rest of the actors had a hard time on the set because they had to memorize up to 15 pages of lines for scenes that were shot in one take. In 2015, Keaton voiced Walter Nelson for the animated film Minions and also starred in the Oscar-winning drama Spotlight. The entire cast of the film received the Actors Guild Award. So he's been more than willing to part with his money at the poker table. <laughs> I've got a kid in college. <laughs> yeah, but I'm gonna keep playing. Oh, problem solved. <laughs> in 2016, a biographical drama about the life of one of the first McDonald's owners, Ray Kroc, was released. The founder, starring Keaton, did not break the budget, but it received positive reviews from critics and film buffs. Here you are. What's this? Your food. No, 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 I just ordered. And now it's here. You sure? After one filming day, he bought ice cream for all the members of the crew. It took two truckloads of refreshing treats to get enough for everyone. And while filming the scene where his character breaks a glass table, the actor injured his hand. In the same year, Keaton received France's Order of Arts and Letters honor, and on July 28, he was honored with the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 2017, the spy thriller American Assassin and the superhero movie Spider-Man Homecoming, starring Tom Holland, were released. Michael played Adrian Toomes, a.k.a. Vulture. This role earned him a nomination for the Saturn Award. And then all of a sudden, this little bastard in red tights shows up. And he thinks he can tear down everything I built. Really. In 2019, the actor played another on-screen antagonist in Tim Burton's Dumbo. It's worth noting that there was a swear jar on the set. Every time someone used obscene language, they had to fill up the improvised piggy bank. Upon completion of the project, the accumulated amount was donated to charity. Michael also appeared in one of the episodes of the mockumentary television series Documentary Now. In 2020, Keaton played the main role and acted as a co-producer of the biographical movie Worth. The same year, the drama The Trial of the Chicago 7 was released. In the film, Keaton portrayed a minor character, U.S. Attorney General Ramsey Clark. The biographical thriller received a lot of glowing reviews, six Oscar nominations, and won the Golden Globe for Best Screenplay, while Keaton got a Screen Actors Guild Award. 
I'm sorry. Swear me in, Bill. It is against the law for you to testify, Ramsey. It is as simple as that. It's General Clark. And arrest me or shut the f up. He then starred in the action film The Protégé and the miniseries Dope Sick. Both projects were released in 2021. In the latter, Michael not only played the main role, but also participated in the production. For his brilliant performance in Dope Sick, the actor received the Screen Actors Guild Award, Golden Globe, and Emmy. Dr. Fenix, did more than 1% of your patients become addicted to Oxycontin? Dr. Fenix. I can't believe how many of them are dead now. In 2022, the premiere of the blockbuster Morbius took place, where Keaton played a cameo role of Vulture. The film failed to live up to fans' expectations and flopped at the box office with a bang. The actor also was the executive producer of the documentary A Tree of Life, The Pittsburgh Synagogue Shooting. In December, the paparazzi noticed 71-year-old Batman at the exit of one of the restaurants in Los Angeles with a woman who was identified as his lifelong friend, Marnie Turner. Meanwhile, according to media reports, the actor received $2 million for his small role in the cancelled movie Batgirl. Last August, after test screenings and a change in Warner Bros. management, the fully filmed project was shelved. After Batgirl was cancelled, fans had to settle for just the first shot of Michael Keaton's Batman posted online. The actor played the same character in the superhero film The Flash, which premiered recently. In addition to Keaton, the project featured Ben Affleck, Michael Shannon, Ezra Miller, and other stars. Another of Keaton's directorial works is in post-production, the thriller noir Knox Goes Away, where he will play a mercenary suffering from dementia. Besides, Michael is working on a sequel to the legendary film Beetlejuice and the comedy Goodrich, where he will appear with Myla Kunis. The actor is an avid reader of news and at one point even considered a career in journalism. By the way, the actor played journalists in three films, The Paper, Live from Baghdad, and Spotlight. The celebrity uses Instagram, where he posts personal and work photos. He also shares thoughts and news with his fans on Twitter. In his free time, the movie star travels, takes long walks with his dog, practices sports and horseback riding, and goes to games of his favorite baseball team, the Pittsburgh Pirates. By the way, he puts trips to games in his contracts with film studios. This item was even in the filming schedule of Batman. By the way, when Keaton was asked which historical figure he would like to play, he chose the legendary baseball player and manager Ted Williams without hesitation. It is also known that the actor practices fly fishing with his colleague Henry Winkler. Michael's fortune totals $40 million, which gives him the opportunity to live the high life. In 1987, he spent $1.3 million on a large house in Pacific Palisades, Los Angeles. His luxurious country house has a nice dining room with open beams, a large lamp, and a fireplace, making the house even more cozy. And there is a stable on the adjoining property. As of 2020, the celebrity still owned this property. In 1989, Michael spent $1.5 million on a house near Santa Barbara, California, and in 2011 sold it for $3.1 million. In 2016, he bought another property near Santa Barbara for $5 million. Located in Summerland, California, the 20-acre property includes a 2,000-square-foot cottage and horse paddocks. Here, the actor tried his hand at landscaping. He also designed and received permission to build another house, and in 2018, he put up for sale this ranch for $8.72 million. Michael spends most of his time on his other ranch. He bought the property near Big Timber, Montana back in the 80s, and now he raises cattle there and admires the local nature. The 1,000-acre property features a cedar and stone house. Batman's car fleet doesn't include Batmobiles, but his regular cars are pretty nice too. It's the right answer. For example, he has a Range Rover autobiography, Audi RS Q8, Tesla Model X, Audi A6, and BMW X7. The actor says that he never really thought about becoming famous, but the most wonderful thing in his work is the endless search and opportunity to self-improve, and that's why we love him. What role of Michael Keaton do you consider the best? Let us know in the comments. Walk through those doors, you forget any of this happened. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.